Helping an old lady cross the street is a timeless good deed. It's the sort of momentary community service you envision a Boy Scout doing when you picture the classic Americana of yesteryear. But in Soviet Russia, no, not street cross you, in Soviet Russia, you call that old lady a Nazi and you stop that bitch dead in her tracks. Nazis come off our streets! No official word on if she survived the cold train ride to the gulag, but the Soviet references aren't even an exaggeration. These people are here proudly under the wave of the hammer and sickle flag. I'm sure you've all seen that viral piece of footage by now, but in case not, linked in the description. And yes, it is exactly what it looks like. Antifa thugs physically blocking and verbally harassing an old woman outside of a speaking event at Mohawk College in Hamilton, Ontario for People's Party of Canada candidate Maxine Bernier, a libertarian right politician from what I understand, as well as Dave Rubin, who of course is known for ushering people into the neo-Nazi movement, according to a column in the local paper. That gay Jew is accelerating Holocaust too, and modern problems require modern solutions, so Elder abuse it is. As ridiculous as that scene was, it wasn't the totality of it, and I don't want to lose the rest of the absurdity behind the feature presentation. The first thing to note about this scene is how it was covered by the CBC. Line one of the story reads, quote, a peaceful protest outside an event for Maxime Bernier turned violent Sunday evening as supporters of his People's Party of Canada began to arrive and enter the venue. Yeah, a hot day turned snowy. A sober man turned drunk, a truthful news report turned false. What I'm saying is, if it turned violent, it wasn't a peaceful protest. And the guy in your photo is a good demonstration of why that description doesn't apply. Thank you so much, Kojo. We're gonna, there's some violence happening right now. Yes. Nicole, uh, there's uh, some fighting going on right now. Hamilton police working to break it up. And uh, protesters are chanting right now, let him go. Things are getting uh, heated. As you can see, there's someone uh, being what appears to be arrested. Are you reading what any of the signs are saying that the protesters are holding up at the moment? Yes, uh, some of the signs say hate speech is not free speech. There are uh, LGBTQ uh, pride flags. Yeah, and don't forget that communist revolutionary sign right in front of you, but I guess we're just going to ignore that one. A lot of signs about free speech and immigration. It must be far-sighted, I guess. <laughs> I guess the Klan must be having trouble recruiting, or maybe they've installed a progressive 21st century diversity quota. Black cop arrests white criminal at KKK's direction, and yet, this is only the second most bizarre narrative of the day. Somehow this is all intellectually square though. I guess you just have to be really, really smart to juggle all of these contradictions. The message is endorsed by a Mohawk College professor who agrees to speak with the reporter. It was important for us as, as uh, professors at the college to uh, uh, reveal why so many people have a, a problem with the People's Party of Canada's ideas. And so why do so many people have a problem with it? What is it about his platform, his view? Sure. I think there's, a, I'd say there's three big things. Um, one is that um, they're clearly very uh, xenophobic as a party. So they're, they're anti-immigrant. It's very blatant in their platform. Uh, they're also like climate change deniers. It's, it's very clear in their platform as well. They're all about, you know, pipelines, pipelines, pipelines. And also I just, their economic policies really are about dismantling social infrastructure in Canada and uh, they would hurt poor and working people. So there's a, just a lot of problems, right? To be clear, xenophobic Phobia means maybe we should have some rules on what qualifies for refugee status. Maybe immigrants should have some merit and some skill and be of net benefit to Canada. Climate change denial means maybe Canada shouldn't self-sabotage its economy in response to predictions with a tenuous track record. Hurting poor and working people means, hey, maybe let's try reduced tax rates. And oh, by the way, reduced corporate welfare too. Maybe let's try freedom 
as an economic plan. And you can agree, disagree, sure, but none of these ideas are feature positions of the Nazi party. None of these ideas are justification for street assault. None of these ideas are anything but mainstream conservative or libertarian thought. These are things that students ought to consider freely and come to their own conclusions rather than having the correct opinions enforced upon them. Evaluating ideas and thinking for yourself, I thought was the whole point of an education. And so that event has been canceled for tonight, but it will be rescheduled. And when, when will that be? Yeah, so I mean, we unfortunately were hit at the last second by the college in $4,000 in security costs, which we just couldn't afford to pay. So we are rescheduling it for Tuesday, October 8th. It will be happening at the college. And that's great that the college will actually then provide an opportunity uh, to balance the freedom of speech here. Balance the freedom of speech is a weird way to put it. Everyone gets to speak freely. And sometimes people will be unanimous in agreement. Sometimes they'll be divided on an issue, but that's for freedom to decide, not for some authority to balance properly. But maybe I'm being too picky here. I agree with the main theme of what he's saying. He gets his free speech, they get theirs, and may the best ideas win in a free and open competition. But why then is he involved, at least passively, in a physical blockade obstructing people from participating freely in that free speech exchange? How is blocking speech balancing speech? Or am I supposed to believe that he'd actually be fine with this same sort of obstruction at his event? Because after all, that's just balance. The most impressive double think of the day, though, is easily missed in the crowd. Most of the signs are the typical nonsense you'd expect. Way too many Nazis. Way too much mental illness is a good alternative hypothesis. Hate speech isn't free speech, as though that could be explained with anything other than subjective feelings. Canadian values are white supremacy, patriarchy, and genocide. And don't forget, not just black face, but black every crevice of your body, plus stuffing your crotch to complete the bit. We gotta be comprehensive here, but I get it, there's only so much space on the sign. But it's this one that's way too square of a peg to fit in any circular hole. Immigrants are welcome here, conservatives are not. Why is welcoming immigrants supposedly so virtuous? I presume this person would say because it's important to be open and accepting to people who are different from you, people who look different from you, people who live differently from you, and yes, people who think differently from you. The reason this person welcomes immigrants is the exact same reason this person betrays in rejecting conservatives. And notice how these groups are treated as though they don't overlap. What about a conservative immigrant to Canada? Is that person welcome as an immigrant? or banished as a conservative. How would we handle this person, according to that sign? There is no possible way. Because premise A directly contradicts premise B. You have to pick one, but you can't without violating the other. This is a person whose foremost message of the day is, I will not tolerate you. Oh, and by the way, shame on you for your intolerance. If I had to maintain these ideas in my head simultaneously, Maybe I'd just start randomly punching people too. The sheer force of that contradiction has to find its way out somehow. The People's Party of Canada is only a year old. I don't follow Canadian politics in any detailed sense, so this episode was my first exposure. Ironically, not because of the ideas of the party, though on a surface level I like what they're saying about individualism and personal liberty and freedom, but I didn't learn these things about the party because the party sold me on them. I learned these things because of a bunch of jackasses having a circus of casual violence in response. I don't know this party's prospects. I can't tell you what to expect in the upcoming Canadian election. That's way outside my wheelhouse. But I can say to these leftist demonstrators, never underestimate how much scenes like this can motivate people to vote enthusiastically with their middle fingers. This is a near photographic representation of how I looked the day I voted Trump against all my prior expectations, and it felt amazingly good. If you don't substitute reason for hysteria, a compelling argument for fists, maybe even a smile in place of that mask if you really want to make a good impression, you will inspire that exact same joy in your fellow Canucks. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter that is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.